Bye, Joe. Bye, Joe. I think he's going to leave, right? Okay. When he's going up. February 2023. Okay, 5.5. Sorry, Mr. President, but I can't work for you anymore. I've already eaten through my savings. Maybe I can get a job with Wister. They say he pays well. And most importantly, he never misses a payment. Sorry, Joe. Uh, Mateo says, Mr. President, I read the investigative report about High Hill. Your expert did not pull any punches. It is surprising how quickly a cookie cutter resort degraded into Sodom and Gomorrah for career politicians. Girls in bikinis, girls with no bikinis, mind altering substances and dubious occult practices. The story is so juicy, I'm starting to get worried about the American establishment's reputation on the world stage. Admit it, he used to be a regular at the place, but decided to expose corruption when manure hit the air conditioner. A timely decision. We officially thank you uh, for your personal, for your personal, thank you for personal involvement and for your personal involvement. I don't know. Saying so the uh, the fourth diplomat, please welcome them with open arms. Ooh, nice, that's good. Right up to eighty percent, sir. You made a wise decision by sending a woman to look after your employee. She managed to drag him out of the kissing booth before the Asian skank could learn anything important. Your employee told that girl, her name is Chu Si An, by the way, got really excited after she learned he is working in the White House. And then they kissed and it literally blew his mind. And looking at his dilated pupils made me realize the skank is pumping my men full of some drug. When we apprehended Si Han, she tried to bite off her tongue, but my boys were on guard. <laughs> they expected that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Considering what uh, things she was doing with it. Long story short, we found a lighter a lighter manufactured in North Korea in her handbag, and a lipstick spiked with a powerful euphoria-inducing agent that dissolves in a body without a trace in about 30 minutes. I have no idea why she was resistant to it herself. I personally thank you for helping us neutralize the spy uh, during the latest press briefing. Your safety is no longer compromised, sir. Oh, I lost 1.2 though. The last batch of Venezuelan oil was so bad. It broke two oil processing plants. Apparently the vice president's mistress wasn't kidding about that dirty oil. So we had to renege on our deal. It won't be easy to recall our industrial equipment, but maybe we can sell it to make up for the costs of the oil plant sitting idle. <sighs> okay, okay. Yeah. We'll give you a raise. Nice. Well, we're going to postpone for now. Keep that in our back pocket. A group of course, Congress people have introduced the 28th Amendment to the Constitution, which renders the president immune to prosecution. According to its authors, this amendment will ensure that any president of the United States can always act in the best interests of the country and make sure America remains the greatest nation on Earth. These are fine words, but like they say, all that glitters is not gold. Paul Leroy says the trial of Manny Stanton, better known as Creepy Pie, ended abruptly with his confession to the murder of 38 women. According to the serial killer, he cut their brake lines and chased his victims down until they lost control of their vehicles. Stanton has been sentenced to 325 years in prison. He will serve out his sentence in one of the toughest prisons in the country, Quinton Bounty in California. Archie Whistler says the 28th Amendment, which our so-called president is currently trying to push through using every underhanded method in the book, is the last desperate gasp of a condemned criminal. As Americans, we cannot allow this con artist to act with impunity. See about that, Archie. Sir, you recently sent Alta on a mission with me. I don't mind her, but I don't really like working with women. It's not that I don't like them. I just prefer to do everything calmly and without any unnecessary squealing. Wow, Ben. Wow. Isn't that like... <laughs> didn't... <laughs> didn't Ninja... Ref I don't know. Didn't Ninja refuse to work with women too for some reason? I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't really follow that stuff very closely. Buddy, don't forget my position as VP is also known as President of Congress. You know that, right? And today I have the honor of speaking at the amendment hearing. 
As a member of the executive branch, I can only vote if there's a tie. And in the case of the amendment, that's not a problem. We have enough votes. Plus, some congressmen realize which way the wind was blowing. So they suddenly change their position. Yes, that's actually how most of the politicians in this country behave. But you and I aren't like that. Uh, the vice president of the president of the Senate. They can break ties in the Senate. Which actually, I believe, is... Uh, I think that's the way the Senate is right now in the states. The vice president is... It's, isn't it tied or the Democrats have like one extra vote? Something like that. My friends, it is a special honor to stand before you today. This is a historic day as we begin consideration of the 28th Amendment to the Constitution. 28 is a lucky number for me. I was born in February, and that's the number of days of the month. True, I was born in a leap year on February 29th, so we usually celebrate my birthday on March 1st, but that's not what's important. Fortunately, the amendment under our consideration today is as succinct as our president's speech. Unlike me, he always chooses his words carefully and cuts right to the point. Thank you, and I now give the floor to my colleagues. Javier DeBaca. Thank you, Mr. President. Now I would like to remind my esteemed colleagues of the many consequences to which their decisions may lead. Now, if we don't pass this amendment, America may soon be overrun by the Chinese. My friends, I have studied in great detail the biographies of all the American presidents. Woody Panetta. Is this the one that uh, got the makeover? Or am I thinking of someone else? Oh, no, no, no. This is the one that faked that they were the son of the former president, right? And I assure you, each and every one, from Washington and the Roosevelt's to Panetta and Face, they would all support this amendment to the Constitution. So say I, Woody Panetta. Wanda Humphrey, Congresswoman from New York. I have spent decades in this chair and voted for hundreds of laws which have improved the lives of countless Americans. And I am grateful for this historic opportunity to vote for Amendment 28. Ken Verbitsky is the one that we got the uh, casino for, right? Or something like that. Fortune is smiling favorably on Amendment 28 today. I will vote. Yeah. Yay! There's always a risk, but in this game, the risk is worth the reward. Rich Buckwalter. But presidents are often forced to make unpopular decisions. We must protect the commander-in-chief in order to gain a competitive advantage over our rivals and put an end to their corrosive influence on our business. I love the president dearly. And as a mother of many children and defender of the unjustly oppressed, I urge you to vote for Amendment 28 and make our country stronger, says Berta Glover. Buddies! I will only add one more thing to the words of my esteemed colleagues. It's just a shame that the amendment doesn't say anything about the vice president. But hey, no one is stopping me from passing the 29th amendment later, and that's definitely my lucky number. Wait. I thought 28 was his lucky number. Oh, is a lucky number. <laughs> this concludes today's session. Thank you all. Nice. We're back above 80. Sir, Vice President Estaba's remarks are hurting your reputation. In my stream today, I'll be talking about the five worst vice presidents in history. And Mr. Estaba is at the top of the list. I wanted you to hear this from me, not from my Twitter. By the way, they're giving lectures on public speaking at Golden Ratio. I invite you and the VP to attend. Is he making a play to be a uh, VP? New VP? The Beast Whisperer. I like attention as much as the next guy, buddy, but the price is just too high. I know I sound crazy, but I swear to God, a bird in the White House garden has it out for me. Birds are like that. It's not surprising. It nailed my jacket the first time about a week ago. But I was happy as a, as a clam, buddy. The late Granny Estaba always said it was good luck. But I started wigging out a little when uh, the same bird pooped on me the next day. And there was a bunch of reporters standing right there. I started grabbing an umbrella every time I went out after that. But they just laughed at me. Even more, there wasn't a cloud in the sky all week. Just my luck. You know what the worst part is, buddy? 
yesterday after running after ruining my day and my jacket for the upteenth time that little shipper ended up in a dang photograph turns out it's some kind of rare endangered species what do you call it a black weeder wheat deer wheat tear apparently it's the only one in washington now the whole internet is praising its aim and the pic where i'm standing there with crap all over me is more popular than that baby dancing around in suspenders i don't see any crap on your jacket what are we gonna do about my soiled reputation buddy i don't have time for your bullshit right now tony Uh, don't let people laugh at you. That's what you're around for. The bird nailed me with a couple more bombs, buddy. I'm not telling you the nickname the press has come up uh, with for me, but I'm going to spend tonight getting loaded, bawling like a baby and listening to Arizel. What? I lost ratings for that? Vice President Estaba, who has already been called a marked man in Washington circles, felt no shame about speaking to the press with stains on his suit. He apparently intended to demonstrate his fearlessness, but combined with his typically conspiratorial, re conspiratorial rhetorical style, uh, his befouled appearance only made him look even more moronic than usual. The president is clearly not too choosy about the company he keeps. That was pretty bad. I Maybe I should have gone with the, like, the bird repeller thing holy look at all these things guys bill bondi white house social media director sir our new social media guy accidentally posted his own love letter on the white house profile i was about to freak the hell out but our followers actually seem to like the content for some reason we haven't gotten that many likes and reposts since that pic of flotus wearing a white dress in the rain hey everybody loves love right if our employees personal lives really resonate that much with people we should have a day once a week where everyone can share their thoughts, messages, and photos. After we've looked them over carefully, of course. What do you think? Sure! Hun, do you remember that awful musical Roy wrote? It was called My Dear Mr. P, and it was about two gay guys who beat some girl up. I thought they ran over. I thought he ran over. S or did we run over someone? <laughs> I don't remember. We've, we've murdered so many people. I'd rather just forget it, but now Avares has announced they're making a movie based on it. We shouldn't get involved in it ourselves. That'd just make people suspicious. We need to be sneaky. I'll ask my old friend Alvin and his husband to start spreading a rumor that my dear Mr. P has a homophobic message. Pretty good idea, right? Uh, I don't like it. Alan Rickles. Mr. President, I have a business preposition for you that will benefit us of both. I need your voters for the next election, and you could stand to appear a little more down to earth. What if I came to Washington and shadowed you for a day? The whole thing would be broadcast live, of course. A nice lunch with the First Lady, lessons in elocution from the Vice President, and so forth. What do you say? I guess... I don't really like that guy. I like Estaba more. But Estaba's a bit of a fuck-up. But that's... He's, he's our fuck-up, you know? Samantha Dickinson, Senator for Alaska, says, Mr. President, Congress is trying to make it so you aren't the commander-in-chief of the military anymore. Well, not you exactly, but all American presidents. If they can convince the Senate to go along with it, the privilege of declaring and prosecuting wars will uh, go right to Congress. At this rate, eventually the president's only power will be choosing his first lady. Do you want my party to block this initiative? It's like that for a reason! Yes! Bill Graham, this is America TV channel director. Sir, America is hooked on pain and fame. The most daring reality show of the century. According to its creators, contestants perform various tasks. The winners get prizes and the losers get the lash. No, I mean it literally. They get torture, medieval style. <laughs> Holy shit. The first few shows weren't too bad. Instead of the Spanish boot. They had to wear jackboots. Rat torture was just talking to the press. But recently, all the equipment has become suspiciously similar to the real deal. And the same goes for the blood and the victim's screams. To make a long story short, it isn't funny anymore. Should we cancel the show? Once again, we only care about money and ratings and the bill.
I think this is a trap. I think I think saying no is going to increase our ratings. Hey, buddy, I heard Ellie's caught between her talk on family issues at the UN and wanting to spend Valentine's Day with you. I offered to help her. She could stay here and have a romantic dinner with you while I take over for her at the conference. I mean, how hard could it be, right? I'll just read her speech and I don't know, figure something out. She doesn't trust me, buddy. She wants to do the whole thing herself. Could you talk her? Could you talk to her for me, bud? Maybe you can convince her to let me help? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to lose tons of ratings for that. Anthony Persaki, Secretary of Veteran Affairs. Sir, if you're thinking about who needs some love right now, I've got an answer for you. Veterans. They've got a real need for pure, genuine human feeling after the horrors of war. Well, are there any creatures on this earth purer or more genuine than children? Let's suggest an initiative encouraging school kids to send veterans homemade valentines. What do you think? Should we try to bridge the gap between the generations? Yeah, that sounds great. Joe Vanny, statue president of... Statue president of New York? Is there a statue president? Mr. President, last year's idea to build a statue of you in Central Park was only the beginning. Your fans have decided that we should have a gigantic statue of you right next to the Statue of Liberty. I'll invite you to a brainstorming session where we've been trying to decide which pose to immortalize you in. Maybe you could be like Napoleon in that famous painting where he's on a horseback and making a victorious gesture, eh? Yes. I want a statue. You didn't have your heart set on seeing yourself next to Lady Liberty, did you, Mr. President? That was fast. That was just a fun little prank. <laughs> Besides, why do you need a statue? You're sure to go down in history as the most self-centered president in America. What the fuck? Hey! Who knew White House employees led such interesting lives, sir? Half the country has been following them on our social feeds every Friday. They're full of slice-of-life humor, romance, and tearjerkers. Take me! I posted the pic of my first dog, Sparky, and now he's famous. It was a great idea letting our employees post personal stuff once a week. Okay. And? It's working. Mr. President, our Kids to Vets initiative was well received by both kids and vets. I think the kids are just glad to get a break from class to draw the Valentines, but the veterans were really touched. As Major General Henry said to the press, amazingly, the children drew peace signs on their Valentines, more often than tanks or hearts. Either we've got a generation of real pacifists on our hands, or the whole hippie thing is back with a vengeance. <laughs> Ellie's not here, is she, buddy? Sweet, I'm a little scared to bump into her after my talk at the UN. Everything was going smooth as silk. I started reading her speech just like she told me to. Then I decided it was kind of dumb to just read stuff about families or whatever on a piece of paper. So I told them what what I think about the whole thing. Then I mentioned what one of my girls used to say. Why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? Anyhow, I drew them a picture of what things are like in the modern world. <laughs> the applause wasn't too encouraging. I didn't even take a look at the rest of the talk until I was on the way back. It was all about how important marriage is for American values. Whoops. <sighs> Mr. President, everybody's talking about the feature on fame and pain. Apparently, when the show's rating started slipping, the producer decided to add a little realism. He found some homeless people who were willing to suffer for a few bucks. Then he tortured the shit out of them. Spine-tingling stuff, huh? Well, it all happened right under our noses, and we didn't do a thing about it. <laughs> I just, no, stop it. Stop it. Mr. President, my party spoke out against depriving you of the title of Commander-in-Chief. Needless to say, the Congress people behind the idea weren't happy. They won't budge, and they've already given a big interview in Sands with the catchy headline, Congress Declares War on President. It says you've been demonstrating terrifying militaristic ambitions and trying to become the sole master of America. But it's the separation of powers! It's a, it's a, a delicate... Okay. I think people would freak out if that happened, if they decided they, the Congress would take that power from the president. Just saying. I don't know what you were thinking, ignoring the movie they made based on my dear Mr. P. 
but a miracle never happened. Everybody is tearing the movie apart, and they're also talking about whether it's based on a true story and what role you might have played in it. Just look at how the movie critic from Just DC ended her review. My dear Mr. P isn't just a mirror into reality, it's a magnifying glass that gives us a chance to painstakingly examine every aspect of a truth that has eluded us for so long. It's a good thing everybody was sick of this whole topic two years ago. Oh my god, guys, I took such a beating there. Save the journalists, organize negotiations, and settle a conflict. All things people need to travel for. And settle a conflict at 75%. Uh, this isn't good, guys. I'm struggling here. When do I get to pass this bill? Aren't I supposed to do like a State of the Union speech too? When does that happen? Should I sign this now? 4.5, I can't afford that. Let's just sign this now. Honey, when this bill passes, we'll finally reduce all the leaks that come from idiots with no imagination beyond two-factor authentication. Ready to sign the papers? Honey, leaks from the government agencies used to happen almost every day. Now we're better protected, thanks to you. Okay. Right, 81% now. But I still can't hire this person, right? 85. I need 4%. Let's do it. Buddy, you know I'm more of a conspiracy nut, and it looks like there's a lot of money to be made, too, but I like the idea of sharing this knowledge with all of America, and for free. What do you think? Do you want to hand this disc over to the eggheads? Buddy, the eggheads almost faded at what you gave them. They've already announced the revolutionary super fast project or something. They say everybody in the in the know is thrilled. Sands is publishing an article on the new captain of science. You. Okay. Let's hire Amira. Happy to work with you, sir. I can gain access to anywhere and find out anything you need to know. Okay. Now, let's take a look at our administration to see. Team members' actions increase stress points by one less. Okay. Team members are paid 20% more. 250,000 at the end of every month. Your rating gains at your events are reduced by a third. I like it. Two hundred fifty thousand, but we lose one point four. So right now we're ga we're gaining four point five. Those two balance out. Oh, sorry, that was the chief of staff one, right? Okay, four point five. Four point two. Four. Still gaining. Okay, so we're still gaining a lot of uh, ratings. What, how's Ben? Team members are paid 40% more at the end of every month. And then Troy. Rating gains after events are reduced by a third. Okay, so I guess we're going to want... How's Sasha, Chief of Staff? Three stress points by one less. 20% more. I think we want Clint as chief of staff again. We need more cash. What about power broker? You can send your subordinates on regular assignments to sell personal data. Key members are paid 30% less at the end of every month. You lose 250,000. Rating gains after events are reduced by a third. Spread propaganda. Team members are paid 25% less. 
actions increase stress points by one. Okay, and what are we getting now? Hunter Knight. We're getting a lot of money. I'm pretty happy with this. We're going to get a bunch of money now. We're net minus 257,000, but that's fine. We're going to still gain some uh, some ratings. Okay. Protect nature. 